Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of the Seattle Mariners franchise here on MLB The Show 19. Got a big episode for you guys here for September leading up to the postseason. So if you are excited, please go ahead, drop a like on this video, subscribe if you are new to the channel and want to see more of this and three other franchises here on the channel as it is franchise content. All day, every day, here on Franchise Gaming. We got Kikuchi. They got Clevenger. Let's get into this game. Okay, so here's our lineup for the day. It's a little bit of a younger lineup as we've got Padilla leading off we have Sammy Francisco and catcher Michael Papierski at the end of the lineup those guys coming up to help us out from triple a part of the September call-up system let's see if we can get this dub as Kikuchi gonna walk the first batter DJ LeMahieu it's Francisco Lindor gonna put one out into the gap and that is going to bring home the runner as the Indians going to take that one nothing lead. So here's Kikuchi up against Ramirez and Jose Ramirez down the right field line. Going to bring Lindor in and remain on first base for Miguel Andujar, the former Yankee. Going to take Kikuchi deep to the right field seats. And that's going to make it a 4 nothing game right off the bat. Kikuchi, though, will strike out Josh Reddick and Tyler Naquin and eventually get out of this inning. So here's Sammy Francisco with two on, and he's going to ground into a double play, and I guess he's not really ready to be a full-time major leaguer. Here's Sean Padilla, and that's not going to get caught out there in right field. That's going to put runners on the corners here in the third. Here's Bogarts. He's going to ground out out and he's going to ground into a double play and end our threat there now top six though Bogart's gonna make up for it with a solo shot out to right center field that thing's out of here it cuts the lead in half here's Anthony Rendon he's gonna put one down the right field line and Clevenger can't get out of the six just yet as Rendon will get into second with a double. Here is Mitch Hanniger, and he is going to ground out to short. Lindor takes care of him. Good play by Lindor. But Crush Davis comes in to do exactly what we're paying him to do this year. Crush the baseball. He's going to tie the ball game. But Josh Reddick going to take one deep off the wall in right center. That's going to bring a run home here as we try to make the play, but the throw is not there. Teddy McDaniel going to come in now in relief of Kikuchi. He does not have a great ERA in the 10 games that he has pitched this season. But we know he's done some work, especially in last year's playoffs. And there he is striking out a batter to end the inning. Now Ryan Stanek. Going to come into the game for Cleveland. A 5.79 ERA. That's not great. And right away, Mitch Hanegrenade's going to hit one out to right field. And that's going to tie this ball game in the top of the eighth inning. Now top of the ninth. Chance for the Mariners as Padilla walks. Bogarts hits one up the middle. Two on, two out. Big moment. Stanek and Rendon and Rendon over to Lindor and that's going to end the threat there. Bottom nine, Teddy McDaniel still in. Tyler Naquin is going to fly out to first base. That's a good sign, getting one away. Here is Zimmer and he's going to take a walk. And that's going to put up Austin Romine. Zimmer had stolen second base and Romine. The most unlikely hitter to do it for the Indians gets the job done. Andujar, the player of the game with his homer. And you'd have to say that's probably the biggest hit of the game. Crush Davis, Sander Bogarts, and Mitch Hangrenades all hit home runs for us. But it was not enough in this one as we fall to a walk-off. 6-5 here at Progressive Field to the Cleveland Indians. 
but it shouldn't hurt our playoff position all that much. We've got such a lead in the Central, I or such a lead in the West, I don't think we can lose it. We just got to go ahead and beat these Oakland A's, which we go ahead and do, as I simulated through that one. We win it 5-4 with two runs in the ninth. What a walk-off to get the victory there, down 4-3 going in. So Paris Allen goes two for five for them with an RBI. Piscotti gets two RBIs on his one hit in the ball game. Malone with the other RBI for Oakland. Paris Allen hit a triple and a home run. So very good game for him. Piscotti also hit a home run in the game. Looking at our guys, 3 for 5 for Bogarts, 2 for 5 for Rendon with two ribbies. Got to like what Rendon was able to do there. He hit a two-run shot. Looking at the pitching, Manaya gave up three runs, and Gonzalez gave up four in five and a third. So now we're going to manage the next one. It's just as Sheffield. He gives up a solo leadoff shot to Paris Allen, two doubles and a single, and that's going to bring three runs in. So now we do nothing in the first, and now Sheffield up against Sheldon News here to start off the top of the second inning. Just as Sheffield has to be better than he was in that first inning because he was awful. Fly out, a walk, a walk, a fielder's choice, and finally a fly out to get us out of it. Hanniger hits a double, and Domingo Santana with a two-run shot. And then base Nakajima going to single in a run. Wow, look at all these. Look at this. A seven-run second inning for our Mariners just all over the place, batting around the order and just destroying Daniel Mengen. So they're going to bring in Cotton now, and they're going to try to get some runs here, but they can't get any off of Justice Sheffield, whose energy is starting to run out already. It's a little concerning. There's a stolen base for base Nakajima. We're going to try to get him as far as we can. Mitch Hand Grenades hits a solo shot. Ryan Healy hits a solo shot as well. So that makes the lead 9-3 now. Sheffield getting his outs. Bogarts gets a double, but he is left on base. Paris Allen hits another solo homer off of Sheffield. And there's a double for Malone, a single for Piscotti, and that's where we're going to take him out. We're going to put in the AAA player, Babe Stanford, who gives up a grand slam. Wow. So Villalobos is going to come in now, and he will get us out of the inning. Domingo Santana now up, and the game is now 9-8. And now a lot closer than it was before. But Ryan Healy with a solo shot. Another homer for Healy in this one. And that's going to make it 10-8. to eight. So now there's Bogarts on base with Montas pitching. And nothing ends up happening. So it is time to bring in a closer. And Keith Lovett, we try to bring in the AAA man. He can't do it. So we're going to bring in Ken Giles to try and get us out of this thing. There's a pop-up. There's a fly-out. And we're going to win it a lot more dramatic than it needed to be. But we get the 10-8 to victory here against the Oakland A's. And we sweep them in this two-game set. Now, it is the Astros and the A's. They are kind of fighting for that first wild card spot, and you can see the Astros take two out of the three games in their final series, and that's going to put the A's two games up on the wild card, but out of the spot for the first wild card. They're pretty much not going to get that. We are now in the last series of the year as we've simulated forward to it. So three games remaining. The A's are up two on the Orioles. Orioles would have to win, sweep this entire series to make the playoffs. Let's see if they can do it as we're going to do some CPU, CPU gameplay here to see who ends up with the final playoff spot in the American League. Dylan Bundy on the mound. He's got Matt Chapman at the plate with a man on second base, and that thing's going to carry over the 388 Ricky Henderson sign, and that's going to be gone. A 2-0 start for the A's. 
Here's Paris Allen, and he's got one down the left field line. That's going to bring another runner home in the bottom of the second. So Jonathan VR going to lead off the top, or he's going to have top of the third here with two outs and a full count, and he bombs one out there. So VR starts the scoring for the O's. Here's Ryan Mountcastle, and he's got one going deep, and it's out of here. Ryan Mountcastle with a two-run shot has tied this game. Frankie Montas is coming into the game. He's only pitched in three games. He did pitch in that managed game against us. But he's going to give up a three-run bomb to Jonathan VR, his second homer of the game. And Alex Cobb going to come in for the O's with this 3-1 three-run lead at 6-3. Cobb has been a very middling pitcher, and he's got bases loaded here. Pinder is going to dribble one to third, and the double play is complete to get out of it. Wonderful defensive play from Baltimore. Richard Blyer coming into the game now. He's got a great record, great ERA. Hopefully he can keep it going here for the O's. The underdogs unite. Here's Matt Olson with the bases loaded. He's going to rip one up the middle. That's going to bring in a run. Somebody else coming home, and he's going to get gunned down at the plate. That was Malone getting gunned down. And now wall up for the O's, and he has got one going deep to left field. Back, back, and out of here over the 330 wall. And the lead is three once again. Jarrell Cotton going to come into the game now. He does not have the best of ERAs in relief. And he's going to face Jace Peterson. And his ERA is going to hold up to be pretty bad. As that's going to go over the 362 wall and give the O's a four-run lead. However, that wouldn't last very long as here's a bomb right here. Going over the right field wall for a solo shot, bringing the A's a little bit closer. Tommy Canely going to come into the game here late for the A's as he's got two on in the top of the ninth, and that's going to bring a runner home for sure, making it 9-5. to five. Now, two, now they intentionally walk a batter to bring up DJ Stort, and Stort is going to get an out, but he will be be safe at first base. That brings another runner home. It's a 10-5 lead for the O's. Pinder going to strike out. And now Jerickson Profar up at the plate with Tanner Scott pitching. And he gets two strikeouts in a row to win this one for the Orioles. VR, clearly the player of the game. Two homers, four total ribbies in this one. And now the Orioles live to fight another day as we go into the second game of this three-game set. Reminder, if the A's win any of them, they clinch the playoff spot. So here it is, Orioles, they got to get this. VR going to lead off against Snell, and he's going to lead off with a bomb! Jonathan VR off of Blake Snell, he hits his third homer in two games. Raymond Ha going to come in in relief of starter here in the bottom of the fifth inning as nothing much has happened, but this is going to be Paris Allen, and it is going to be over the center field wall to tie it up. So now Matt Olson going to hit one down the right field line. That one's going to be called fair, and that is going to put two runners in scoring position here. Now base is loaded with two outs, and that's going to be taken care of by the defense as they get out of this thing with a tie ball game. Daniel Gossett going to come into it now for the A's, and he does exactly what he's supposed to do. We'll see if Jimmy Yacobanis can do the same thing for the O's in the bottom of the eighth. Oh, no, that's not going to do it. That's a bomb. And that is going to make it 2-1. to one. As here down the left field line, that's another really good hit. And that's going to bring in another one for the Oakland A's. It's going to make it 3-1 to one here. And Lou Trevino going to come into the game to try and close these Orioles out and put the Oakland A's, another division rival of ours, in the postseason. Here is the first batter, and he's going to pop out on a 2-2 pitch. Easy infield fly pop out for Matt Chapman to catch. Now here's Valenzuela 
against Trevino. It's going to be grounded to second and thrown on to first. Olsen gets the put out there. So now DJ Stort with the last chance, and that's kind of an embarrassing way to go out as the Oakland A's have clinched that final American League playoff spot. Daniel Gossett gets the win. He only pitched one inning. I believe he got hurt in the ball game, but the A's bullpen did a fantastic job. All right, so now we go into the records for the season. We'll take a look here. Blue Jays are going to be in the postseason as the winners of the AL East. Look at the Yankees. They actually finished above 500. If you guys remember the records that they had in August, they did an amazing job to finish where they were at. Indians clearly in the Central and three teams from our division. Wow, just to make it a little bit harder. We may have to face a team we know very well. So in the wild card, it's going to be the Astros and the A's. We will have that for you next episode with some CPU, CPU gameplay. The Phillies win the NL East. The Nats are going to make the wild card. The Mets with 93 wins are left out of the playoffs. Reds win the Central with 104 wins. Pirates going to make the wild card as well. So it'll be Pirates, Nationals. In the NL wild card, which will also be brought to you on some CPU, CPU gameplay. The Rockies make the playoffs with only 88 wins. Very sad the Mets got left out because you'll see they're in a lot of like league-leading things and awards here. As we start with the awards, Mike Trout going to win the MVP in the American League. I'm sure he deserves it with a 324 average and 43 homers. Cy Young goes to Carlos Carrasco. He went 18-6. and six. With a 256 ERA. Carlos Correa with the batting title with that 327 average, best in the bigs. The reliever of the year goes to our boy, Ken Giles. Very good signing. 47 saves on the year and a 244 ERA. So we get the reliever of the year going into the postseason. Hopefully, he can keep that going. Josh Ockme going to win Rookie of the Year for the Boston Red Sox. Hank Aaron Award goes to Mike Trout for the third consecutive season. Shane Bieber wins Gold Glove Pitcher for the Yankees. Gold Glove Catcher Gary Sanchez also for the Yankees. That's his third in a row. Gold Glove first baseman Jake Bowers, second base Glaber Torres, third base Miguel Andahar, shortstop Francisco Lindor, left field will be Andrew Benatendi, center will be Bradley Zimmer, and right field Mason Valenzuela of the Orioles. Silver Slugger DH, Nick Castellanos, catcher Salvador Perez, first base Paul Goldschmidt, second base Jose Altuve, third base Jose Ramirez, Shortstop Carlos Correa was hoping Bogarts would get it, but he didn't hit 33 homers. Outfield, you get Trout, you get Stanton, and you get Mitch Hanegrenades for the second straight year with his 35 home runs, 102 RBIs. He's been huge. Now to the National League. Look at this. The NL MVP is Michael Conforto with a 307 average and 52 home runs. Michael Conforto hit 52 home runs. Patrick Corbin wins the Cy Young at 20 and 4. Corey Seager wins the batting title. Reliever of the Year award, Matt Bowman for the Reds. So, very interesting. That's why they were able to win so many games. He had 49 saves. Rookie of the Year's Mitch Keller of the San Francisco Giants. Odd. Odd. So the former Pirate going to the Giants. Hank Aaron Award goes to Michael Conforto. Second straight Met to win the award. Gold Glove pitcher Luis Castillo wins his second in a row. Matt Wieters at catcher. Freddie Freeman wins his third in the row at first. Garrett Hampson at second base. Brian Anderson wins his second in a row at third. Ahmed Rosario at short. Marcelo Zuna at left. Ender Inciarte at center. J.P. Hunt at right. Silver Slugger pitcher Joe Ross with that Cool 151 average and 10 RBIs. Wilson Ramos at catcher. Let's see, Dozier at second base. Machado at third. Trey Turner at short. Conforto easily in the outfield as well as Bryce Harper and Christian Yelich. 
So looking at the list of top 50 prospects, we're going to see if we see anybody we would know. James Bowman is number one prospect in baseball. Let's see. There's a lot of Padres here. That's very interesting. And we're going to see if there's anybody from the miniseries. There you go. John Zoidberg is a top prospect, number 17. Joe Adele still a prospect in this. AJ Puck still a prospect. Oof, some of these guys have been prospects for a while. Let's see. Jared Kalenic. So there's our first prospect at uh, 34 ranking. Tom Hammock, one of our very first draft picks. He's number 36 in the league. Keith Lovett is number 46. So there we go. We got three so far. And finally, Jamie Lisi, one of our older prospects. I mean, his face looks like he's 80, but he's only 24. So we have some top prospects. There's some guys from the miniseries and the top prospects, and we are all set for the playoffs. The Oakland A's and the Houston Astros are going to take e each other on in the AL wild card, NL wild card, Pirates, and Nats. You will see those two computer versus computer in the next episode. So make sure that you like this video, subscribe for more of this content just like this, and three other franchises on the channel. Franchise content all day, every day here on Franchise Gaming. So don't forget to hit that noti bell. You're a pretty little star boy.